My name is Afrat Dutan, and I'm a medical oncologist focused on the care of uh, patients with pancreatic cancer. This video will focus on second-line chemotherapy treatments for patients with metastatic pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. As most of you know, pancreatic cancer is usually diagnosed in advanced incurable stage and has very poor prognosis. And conventional chemotherapy remains the core therapy that we use and the standard of care for patients with this advanced disease. We have limited treatment option, and that's why it's really important to uh, make sure patients are exposed and have access to all available therapies during their treatment journey and really pay attention and think about how we sequence these treatment while treating patients with this aggressive cancer. So multiple factors uh, come into play when we think about second line therapy and the choice of the treatment has to take all these factors into account. But number one, we have to think about what patients received in the frontline setting, and that will inform what we should use in the second line setting. But additional factors include um, whether the patients have any residual side effects, uh, what is their performance status, comorbidities, symptoms that may affect their ability to tolerate treatment in the second line setting. Do they have any actionable mutations that were found on NGS testing, uh, which hopefully was done after their diagnosis? Um, and also, uh, what type of tolerance did we, do we expect them to have from this treatment? Um, and what are their goals of care as they embark on this second line treatment? So based on the current treatment guidelines, for patients that received a 5-FU-based therapy in the frontline setting, and this could be fulfirinox or nalirifox, the second line treatment should be a gemcitabine-based treatment, such as gemcitabine and napacataxel. However, for patients that received gemcitabine-based therapy in the first-line setting, the preferred second-line treatment should be a 5-FU-based therapy. And uh, usually we would use something like 5-FU and liposomal irinotecan or naliri, sulfiri, or even fulfox. Thinking about uh, liposomal irinotecan, just uh, so we understand what is the difference about this drug, this drug has uh, an encapsulated liposomal nanoparticles that cover the irinotecan. And the idea is that this would enhance the accumulation of the SN38, the active metabolite within the tumor, and also uh, prevent the rapid clearance, thereby increasing the efficacy and reducing the side effects. And the benefit of uh, using this drug was published in the uh, Napoli 1 study. This was a phase three randomized trials that investigated the effect of liposomal irinotecan in patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer in the second line setting following gemcitabine based treatment. The patients were randomized to receive uh, 5FU plus naliri, naliri alone, or 5FU alone. And the results of this trial showed an improvement in median overall survival, 6.1 months with the combination of 5-FU and liposomal irinotecan versus 4.2 months with 5-FU alone. In terms of adverse events, grade three or four adverse events occurred most frequently uh, were neutropenia, fatigue, diarrhea, and vomiting. And these were managed by dose reduction. And what was interesting is later on, there was data presented in terms of outcomes for those patients who had dose reduction. And the benefit in terms of overall survival and progression-free survival was maintained in those patients that had dose reduction. So this regimen is approved for use and is recommended for patients that receive uh, gemcitabine-based therapy in the frontline setting for uh, second-line treatment. So other than uh, using liposomal irinotecan plus 5-FU as an option, uh, another option would be to use oxaliplatin-based therapy. We have two studies that were done uh, looking at oxaliplatin-based therapy in the second-line setting. The CONCA 003 trial, which randomized patients to uh, 5-FU and folinic acid versus 5-FU, folinic acid, and oxaliplatin. And the pancreox study, which randomized patients to Folfox versus 5-FU and leucovorin. And the results of the studies are actually conflicting. The CONCA003 trial demonstrated improvement, improvement in overall survival in patients that received the combination of oxaliplatin, uh, folinic acid, and 5-FU. Conversely, the pancreox study did not show any benefit from the addition of oxaliplatin. 
This makes it difficult to really understand what oxaliplatin can provide patients in this setting. And another important consideration is that if patients receive gemcitabine and napacataxel in the frontline setting, many of them may have neuropathy, which would make it quite difficult to give them oxaliplatin in the second line setting. And this is where irinotecan based treatment may be more tolerable and more beneficial. We also have to remember that um, targeted therapy and uh, evaluating the NGS testing of patients with pancreatic cancer comes into play in the second line setting. And if patients have any targetable mutation, this is where we would consider these targeted therapies. And we hope with time and potential approval of RAS inhibitors, we will have more treatment options in this setting. We hope you found this helpful and educational learning about second line therapy for metastatic pancreatic cancer. You can find more details and download a full set of slides on this topic from the Core2Ed website. Thank you.